The following is a presentation of the Pro Wrestling Report. Informative, entertaining, and real since 1998. This is the Pro Wrestling Report, Primetime TV, the longest running pro wrestling news program in the world, with your hosts, David Hero and Damian Nelson. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report, Primetime Television, for Saturday, March 10th, 2012, Damian Nelson sitting here alongside David Octavius the Tiberius, the alleged one-time Backyard Hall of Fame hero. One I thought you time. said you were going to have your uh, Hall of Fame ring this week. I said for WrestleMania, I'll have it at the shenanigans party. Great, I'm sure everybody's looking forward to seeing that. At the shenanigans party. Let's get absolutely. right to this week's top story, ladies and gentlemen, and it is week two of the battle on the microphone between John Cena and The Rock. It happened again this past Monday night on WWE Raw where they were face to face, but we first saw The Rock give us a few history lesson segments, and uh, it was vintage rock for sure in those segments. You know, the amazing thing about The Rock doing his history segments was he was wrong on a few things. I mean, and he incensed the British people. They were not pleased about all the negative comments he was throwing out there at them. It was funny, haha. -ha. I know that, but still, people are sensitive. Kind of like you, get upset about little things. It was, as I said, vintage rock. It was good rock. And it was a rock that had not a kink in his armor from the loss, I guess you could call it, the week before to John Cena in their verbal battle in the ring. We would then see John Cena in an empty arena ponder as to Boring. the many reasons why he needs to win this matchup at WrestleMania in Miami. It was unique, and I thought it was a step back from the John Cena of a week before. I don't know what was unique about it because it almost put the entire crowd to sleep. I was, it was boring, it was monotone. It's all the stuff that I do not enjoy about John Cena. Blah. And then they don't even cut back to the live audience to get their reaction because they knew it was bad for TV. John Cena saying things such as, I must win. I must go into WrestleMania and defeat the greatest superstar of all time. That's what he called The Rock, the greatest superstar of all time. John Cena seemingly convincing himself as to how important this match is. And it was, I think, content-wise and what he said, the words he used, very well executed, very well delivered, but it wasn't the same Cena. I think a lot of momentum was lost from his perceived win the week before against The Rock. Well, because people want to see the guy that, you know, is going to make fun. He's going to be the rhyming guy, the funny ha-ha guy. rapper? Yeah, the rapper. They want to see his inner Eminem, you know, bust a move on The Rock. Why's he got to be Eminem? Why can't he be Tupac? Because Tupac is dead. Oh. You sure? Positive. Him and Elvis so, were partying I mean, last weekend. There was so much electricity and excitement between the two of them last week, and then they kept them apart, which was fine. I get that. Keep them apart so they can each build some steam going into their last segment. But the last segment, or the segment in the empty arena, killed it. They were in Boston, Massachusetts. Cena from near there in West Newbury, Massachusetts. The crowd... Some say it was pro Cena. I didn't hear it that way. I heard it as more so pro rock than pro Cena. Now, anytime well, here, WWE well, has gone to Boston. Here's why it sounded more pro rock. Because the men were cheering for the rock. The women deeper. and children were cheering for John Higher. Cena. Yes. Anytime they've gone to Boston, though, it has not been treated as Cena's hometown. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure anybody but John Cena really mentioned that WWE Raw was in Boston in his hometown. Did you expect, given the amount of praise he got from the week before, did you expect more fan reaction on a positive nature for John Cena than what we saw? You would think so because the fans at home feed off of the fans on TV. You know, when they hear the fans booing and cheering, it's not like they're brainwashed, but it's kind of like being pushed in a certain direction. So, okay, well, maybe I'm supposed to be cheering for this guy now. Who knows? 
interesting that he goes into his home state, home city, home area of Boston. And it was 50-50, but I will still say this. There was obviously, for me, a lot more women and children in that audience because I heard a few more Cena chants than the ones for the great one. It would all culminate with the end of the episode where it was The Rock and John Cena face-to-face -face again. This time playing the role of inter speak and leave would be John Cena compared to, I'm sorry, would be The Rock compared to John Cena last week. And uh, it was again, vintage rock. However, the thing that struck me most about The Rock this past Monday night, the intensity seemed to be more amplified than it was the week before. The animosity between these two stars is so obvious. And John Cena playing the role of the antagonist, if you will, sort of pushing the rock's buttons during that entire segment. You can tell they don't like each other. I mean, when the rock got up in John Cena's face and said, I will rip your throat out. Not I'm gonna kick your teeth in. Not I'm gonna rip your head off. I'm gonna rip your throat out. It doesn't get much more personal than that. There has been speculation that maybe it isn't all personal with them. One thing is for sure. If it is or it isn't, they're delivering entertaining television. And all of your discussions for the last two weeks has been about pretty much one thing, The Rock and John Cena. The C Nation is speaking up, and the uh, followers of The Rock are speaking up as well. I don't think that's going to be the case when we get to Miami for WrestleMania. Wow. Because it is, of course, in The Rock's hometown it's in of his Miami. Backyard. I mean, he he played football for Miami. It's going to be absolutely crazy. It is going to be 80-20 Rock John Cena in Miami. And that 80 is going to solidly drown out the 20. Well, yeah, you won't hear that at all. It's the men cheering for The Rock. Are you going to cheer for John Cena? I don't cheer. I'm a broadcast journalist. I pay attention to what's going on so that I may analyze. I have seen video. I have been with you when you have partied and popped bottles after we've seen The Miz and Cody Rhodes do well. Well, I celebrate the endorsed talents because it's me and them against the world. Speaking of endorsed talents, mm -hmm. I apologize to The Miz. I'm sorry. We're going to talk more about The Miz when we get to speaking more about WWE this past week. We ask you, we ask you out there on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash PWR show, what, who was the winner? Who won the verbal battle between The Rock and John Cena? Last week, you all selected The Rock, 55%. To 45 percent. The voting slightly different, but essentially the same. This week on our Facebook page, the fans said again, The Rock left Boston with the upper hand over John Cena. Well, yeah, because The Rock is the popular guy. I would say that last week it was definitely John Cena. This week it was maybe a little bit closer to The Rock, but here's what they've done. What the, they last, done? the last two weeks, one guy has said his piece and has left the ring hasn't really given time for a face-to-face -face rebuttal. So now, this coming Monday night, when they have their, what do you call it? Their it's gonna be the rock concert, and yeah. John Cena will be rapping. This could be, perhaps, the most ridiculous thing they could do going into this match. Really? Well, because it's gonna be both guys making fun of each other. It's gonna be funny. But is it really how they wanna set the table going into WrestleMania? a rock concert and a rap battle. Why not? We gotta get there. We got three weeks, three Raws, I believe, between now and WrestleMania. Because, because my concern is that the fans might get sick of the two of them trading barbs back and forth. Isn't that how you build the big match, though? It is, but you have to have a little bit of a... If they're gonna just keep saying the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, it's gonna get very boring. They need some new material. Brian Gerwitz needs to have some new things to say. Oh, so you, too, are believing that everything they're saying is being written for them? They, You're that no, fan. No, no, Would no, you read no, it no, on no, the Internet? No, 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 no. I mean, on the Internet, I know firsthand that Brian Gerwitz has his hands in this. They go over certain things. Well, what does that matter? It matters a lot because then you got to wonder, okay, yes, you can feel the emotion and the hatred and the animosity between the two of them, but is the pot being stirred by somebody Ooh, else? Well, now. 54% giving it to The Rock this week, 46% for John Cena. Very interested to see how the polling results if you, if you ask, come out next week. If you week. ask Linda Kay, that's 50-50. 
Uh, this will continue next week. I believe Cleveland is the location, and it will be the rock concert, and will be John Cena rapping. This could be John Cena's opportunity to step back up and get into the lead in this battle uh, between Tim and The Rock leading into Miami. Still to come here on the Pro Wrestling Report, we've got this week's Star of the Week, along with much more from World Wrestling Entertainment. A look back at this past T uh, Thursday's TNA Impact Wrestling Point Counterpoint and the History Book, looking back at WrestleMania 3. Pro Wrestling Report Primetime continues right here on My24 Milwaukee. The Pro Wrestling Report presents the Shenanigans Beach Party, hosted by Big Sexy Kevin Nash and Sean X Pac Waltman. Join us at one of the best clubs on South Beach, Ocean's 10, located at 960 Ocean Drive, on Friday, March 30th, starting at 7 p.m. The Shenanigans Beach Party will feature appearances by Billy Gunn, TNA TV champion Robbie E., former WWE Tag Team Champions, The Headbangers, Shane Hurricane Helms, along with others, Tickets for the biggest wrestling party ever are on sale now at PWRshow.com and start at just $15. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report here on My24 Milwaukee. Damian Nelson sitting alongside David Hero. And uh, it's time to talk about this week's World Wrestling Entertainment News, a very eventful SmackDown, a very eventful Raw this past Monday night. And we found out that apparently, uh, we'll get to that in TNA News, um, when we talk about the latest video released featuring Hulk Hogan. A brand new United States champion crowned on Raw this past Monday night, and a championship that was defeated on SmackDown this past Friday night in what was a wild mess of a match. Santino Morella versus Jack Swagger. John Laurinaitis, Teddy Long, Oksana, Dolph Ziggler, Vicky Guerrero, all involved in this match in some way, somehow, somehow. Shenanigans ensued for sure. I loved every minute of it. I thought it was tremendous. It was just a mess. And out of that mess came a new United States champion in Santino Morella, and Boston ate it up. Santino, and you forgot Kofi Kingston. Even Kofi boom, was boom, there. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, talk about exactly what Santino needed. The guy that went into the elimination chamber, the underdog, the Rocky, if you will, came, he hasn't done much the last couple weeks, finally gets some gold, well-deserved, going into WrestleMania now because, you know, he beat uh, Jack Swagger in the rematch. It was a cage match. In a cage match. So that, that right there shocked me. I thought for sure that Swagger and his new haircut would definitely get the, uh, the U.S. championship back. Is it a haircut when you grow it longer? No, it's a, okay, it's a hairstyle. He got his hair did. Is that better? The hair did? That's not grammatically correct. It doesn't make a difference. It's talking about wrestling. Anyways, Santino Morella, the new U.S. champion, you got to figure he's somehow going to be involved in this Johnny Ace, John Laurinaitis, Teddy Long debacle heading into Mania. The Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, returned to Raw. He confronted Triple H, and he was not pleased with the fact that it took The Undertaker alleging that Triple H knew Shawn Michaels was better than him for Triple H to accept that matchup and make it a Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania. Well, Shawn Michaels is now the special guest referee for this Hell in a Cell matchup, and David, I for one am a little confused as to why WWE feels Shawn Michaels needs to be a part of this match. Oh, because Shawn Michaels and Triple H are the buddies, the pals, the amigos, the Click. You don't need Shawn Michaels in a Hell in a Cell match. Let it be the, I mean, in a Hell in a Cell match, there's no rules except for a pinfall. So why do you need Shawn Michaels in the match? Excellent point. Right? It's an excellent point. I don't point. get it. <laughs> I mean, for the people in the back in the locker room that say, oh, The Rock, he's taking somebody's spot. How about Scott Armstrong? Why can't Scott Armstrong be the referee for the Hell in a Cell match? Why does it got to be Shawn Michaels? There's obviously some drama building between Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Maybe that will cast no. the shadow of doubt on the matchup, or Do maybe you know that's what? the out they need for the condition that one of them may be in. The part that's going to suck is if Shawn Michaels is the reason Triple H loses, it defeats the whole purpose of Undertaker's streak. Yep. It taints the streak. Absolutely. Even though if you look deep back into the streak, there's been some shenanigans in some of well, those matchups. that's fine. But, but that, not as of late. No, but Triple H and Shawn Michaels... <laughs> They are the origin. We may say shenanigans, but they originated shenanigans. Go back in the history. You know, there's tons of, of click nonsense that went on. And I can only imagine, 
I feel bad for that for the Undertaker. I think he might be a, he's not going to lose. I right. will say I will DWH this that right now for be the book of WrestleMania. But Don't spoil it. Shawn Michaels involved in this match with Triple H is just going to it's going to be a mess. SmackDown just last night, we saw Drew McIntyre achieve his job back with WWE, as we speculated last week that uh, Johnny Ace would hire him back. He defeated a formidable opponent in Hornswoggle to get his job back on SmackDown. You know, it's Tell you long to come back next Friday poor, and fire him now? Poor Hornswoggle. I mean, come on. Why? Why, why do they got to beat up the little guy? You know, it's not fair. I mean... Drew McIntyre's what, 6'5", six, 6'6"? Six, six? He's a tall one. Yeah, exactly. Also, on SmackDown, we did see Mark Henry finally get a big win. Oh, a win, anyways, as he defeated Big Zeke. Boy, Zeke does it make a difference? <laughs> Flip a coin on that one. I mean, both guys can't, you know, they can't catch a break. The uh, race continues between Kane and Randy Orton to get that matchup at WrestleMania. I think it's a foregone conclusion that those two will be involved physically somehow or another at WrestleMania. But it was a match between John Laurinaitis and Teddy Long that uh, caused Kane to come out and Randy Orton to make the save. Poor Teddy Long and Johnny Ace. They have now been regulated to a SmackDown. That match should have been on Raw, not on really? SmackDown. Really? Absolutely. They have invested so much into the Johnny Ace character. How can they put that match on SmackDown? No one's going to see it. The Miz takes the RKO and the defeat in the main event, which Shocking. involved Cody Rhodes, Sheamus, Randy Orton, The Big Show, and Daniel Bryan. You've apologized. I'm sorry, Miz. I can't wait to hear your further explanation of that. As a matter of fact, next week, profile on Wednesday at PWRshow.com. We're going to profile The Miz. Oh, good. We should. Right, yeah. He needs some FaceTime. And uh, that's this week's WWE Report. And it is now time to move on to this week's Star of the Week. This week's Star of the Week, well, let's face it. It really should be Santino Marella. But Santino, you've already won in the last 30 days. You can't win twice. So we got to go to somebody else. Somebody else that means a little bit much more. Right? Cody Rhodes? No, we're not doing Cody Rhodes. It's been more we're than 30 days. Ken Anderson, TNA Impact, the leader of the Is it Super Bowl. finally gone? You yes. know what? It's, yes. I can't believe that you've locked up my yes. microphone. But Ken Anderson returns to TNA Impact after, what, three, four months off? Going to lead some super friends. It's been friends. about a minute. Going to lead some super friends to victory. Welcome back, amigo. Welcome back, Mr. Anderson. Oh, well, that's this week's Star of the Week, and it is now time to talk about Ring of Honor. Last uh, weekend, Ring of Honor presented a pay-per-view event on the Internet, and we'll give you the results of that pay-per-view in case you did not get a chance to tune in. The All Night Express defeating the world wrestling's greatest tag team, the prodigy Mike Bennett, along with Maria Kanellis, defeats the... Uh, maybe that was your microphone that just fell. What was that? What's going on? And in the actual main event, it was also a tag team matchup as the Ring of Honor champion uh, Davey Richards teamed up up with Kyle O'Reilly, but they were defeated by Adam Cole and Eddie Edwards. After the match, though, Kevin Steen would make his presence known and his interest in the Ring of Honor Championship currently held by Brian Danielson. It, it, Brian, makes, it makes perfect sense. Davey Richards. Davey sorry. Richards. Are I got DVD out of my mind. I'm sorry. Are you saying they look similar? Actually, they don't. No, not at all, but they're similar styles of wrestlers. Oh, very much so. Absolutely. Kevin Steen, finally the buildup is paying off, being that heel, that pain in the neck for Jim Cornette, finally paying off. He's going into some Ring of Honor championship matches. And I like that. I like that a lot. Kevin Steen getting a win uh, this past Sunday with Ring of Honor as well. Uh, that was, that is this week's Ring of Honor report. And there is still so much more to come here on the Pro Wrestling Report as we continue talking about TNA and Impact Wrestling from this past Thursday night. We've got the point counterpoint, which is, should The Miz get a matchup at WrestleMania? The history book looking back at WrestleMania 3. The Pro Wrestling Report continues right here on My24 Milwaukee. Saturday, March 31st. History will be made for internet wrestling fans. Three of the biggest shows for wrestling commentary will come together for a WrestleMania weekend special. 
Pro Wrestling Report's Damian Nelson and David Hero will join with Aftermath's Arter O'Cal and Jimmy Corderas, who will join with Chair Shot Reality's Justin Labar and Josh Eisenberg for a WrestleMania special weekend. Friday from 7 till close, join the three shows at the second annual Kevin Nash WrestleMania party at Ocean's 10. VIP tickets are $99. General admission ticket is $15. Tickets can be purchased at pwrshow.com. Saturday, history will be made as the three shows come together on camera. 1 p.m. at Shucker's Bar and Grill. Come be a part of the taping for the WrestleMania special that will air WrestleMania Sunday on WrestleZone.com. All ages are welcome to come get their face on camera during the taping, then hang out with the whole crew on the beautiful patio at Shucker's Bar and Grill. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report primetime right here on My24 Milwaukee. Damian Nelson sitting alongside David Hero. And it's time for this week's Point Counterpoint. This week's question is very simple, and it is a man who has been rallying for a matchup at WrestleMania. The question is, should he get it? Should The Miz get a matchup at WrestleMania, the granddaddy of them all, after main eventing last year? That is the question. And David Hero... Just to put you in uh, your place and proper perspective on this, I will start with all the reasons why he should. And go. The Miz is one of the top stars in World Wrestling Entertainment. The Miz is still doing media appearances. He is still the face of WWE all around the world. Just one year ago, The Miz was the WWE Champion. The Miz was in the main event at WrestleMania against John Cena. The Miz, shortly thereafter, took a slide in his career. However, he was back in the main event picture at the Survivor Series, again involving John Cena and involving The Rock. There would be no reason for him to be rallying for a matchup if he were Whoa, not going Bonito, to get it you're way at over WrestleMania. Time. The Miz does deserve a matchup at WrestleMania. First of all, The Miz has been miserable in the past, what, eight months or so? I don't know, when did since, you... Uh, since the Survivor Series, since he's the done draft nothing. last year of any merit at nothing any excitement he has what a new t-shirt that's been about it the miz has not done anything to warrant himself to be in this year's wrestlemania wrestlemania is the showcase of the king of kings and lately it's it's what have you done for me lately and the miz has done nothing who are you gonna put him in there with you want to call Dwayne gil gilberg the miz needs a match see you get to go along i'm always cut off brutal this week's point counterpoint and now let's talk about tna impact wrestling and, yes uh, let's talk about some impact big news from uh, this past thursday night new tag team champions and eric young and odb now oh, it's a mixed tag team Meg, it's l the knockouts tag team champions. That, that's what i was going to say next okay after saying it was a mixed well, tag team yes. they are the knockouts tag team champions eric young and odb this could be the best thing they could have done with those belts well, you know what's great is that both of them are fan favorites. Both of them are very entertaining. Eric Young, what a comedian, what a character he is. I mean, you could almost compare Eric Young to Santino Morella. To a degree, you absolutely could. To a degree, could. Yeah. absolutely. And you know what? Congratulations to Eric Young and ODB for getting engaged on Impact. Absolutely tremendous. You think we'll be invited to the wedding? I could only hope so. Talk about shenanigans. Can you Maybe they'll get married can, in Miami. No, the reception's going to be in ODB's garage. <laughs> With a beer and the neighbors? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, also on Impact this week, uh, your star of the week did make his big return. He aligned himself with AJ Styles against Kaz and Christopher Daniels. You know what? That's going to be interesting because all four of those guys are, are actually, they, they've been pals. They've been friends. I'm sure that both, all four of them are going to want to elevate the game and, and have some great matches. And let's just hope going into the next pay-per-view, we'll see Ken Anderson on there. Another very solid edition of Impact Wrestling this past week. Bully Ray, Bobby Roode, and uh, James Storm definitely still taking top uh, ranks in the company. And going forward, Impact is really, I think, on a rise, David Hero. I think it's been really improving from a visual presentation standpoint over the last few months and it's going to take a while for that momentum to catch with the fans and people talk about ratings all this stuff about ratings look the only people that need to care about tna impact ratings are tna spike tv and any other network that has shows broadcast between uh, 9 and 11 on thursday nights you don't need to worry about them so what they got lower they got higher whatever 
as long as they are proud of their product and what they're delivering and have a goal in mind that growth, I think, would follow that. The impressive thing right now about TNA is the creative team is committed to James Storm and Bobby Roode, and that's who they're going forward with. They're not getting nervous because the ratings took a dip. They are putting those two guys at the front of the company, and they're going to ride this one out. Well, one person who we haven't seen on Impact for a while who probably might want to take a step back from being presented as the front of the company or the face of the company is a man who, according to uh, what TMZ has reported and we have learned, Hulk Hogan. Are we now doing this kind of stuff? It's newsworthy, David Hero. Hulk Why Hogan. do you to talk about Hulk Hogan's pythons? Uh, actually, we've all seen his pythons, but I, 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 that this particular uh, new tape that has been made Brother. available features a python that has not necessarily been seen by a worldwide audience. Hulk Hogan apparently involved in a sex tape scandal, which may or may not soon be released to the public. I'm not going to get it. You can watch it all you want. That's my childhood idol. I'm scarred. I'm hurt. That's this week's TNA report, ladies and gentlemen. Let's now move forward into the history do you, book. Do you think that We're was go a, back to well, the future? You know, I think when Hogan would say train, so you first eat your vitamins. You think that was the training part he was talking about? Could have been. Gotcha. Uh, this week, we're taking a look back at WrestleMania 3. As we are in WrestleMania season, next week's edition of the Pro Wrestling Report, we're going to take a look back at the 10 best stars of WrestleMania uh, in a very special St. Patrick's Day edition of the Pro Wrestling Report. But this week, we're going to start with our history book series looking back at WrestleManias of old. And WrestleMania 3 is the place to start. 93,173 people in the Pontiac Silverdome, Pontiac, Michigan. It was the very first pay-per-view wrestling event that I saw as a fan and it was an epic Sunday for that Wrestlemania headlined really by two huge matchups the first of which Randy Macho Man Savage versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and what we as fans continue to call at times one of the greatest Wrestlemania matchups of all time. Hands down one of the greatest Wrestlemania matches but the main match the match that sold the tickets the main event. Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant. I was hoping maybe you'd share your thoughts on Steamboat Savage. Steam Listen, Steamboat and Savage, that is the benchmark. That is the bookmark for all great wrestling matches. If you don't know about it, then you're not a real wrestling fan. Oh. Seriously. Well, what if they weren't born yet? There's YouTube. There is the best of WrestleMania DVDs. Everyone, the Ricky Steamboat Hall of Fame induction talked about that match. If you don't know about WrestleMania 3, Hogan and Andre, Savage and Steamboat, Honky Tonk Man and Jake Roberts, <laughs> Piper. Don't forget and, Alice Cooper. <laughs> Piper and Adrian Adonis. Look at all the tag team matches they had on that show. And the little golf carts, the ring golf oh, carts. It Remember was those? fantastic. Is Hogan Andre the biggest match in WrestleMania history? So far. Yes, but I would say Hogan Rock is right behind it. Hmm. Hogan, listen, Hogan is still the biggest star in all of wrestling. You can take Austin, you can take Rock, you can take whoever you want, Gorgeous George, that's fine. Hulk Hogan is worldwide known. That's this week's history book, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's edition of the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime Television. As we said, next week it's a special edition of the show, so we take a look back at the 10 best stars of WrestleMania. However, this week you can join us in five more minutes where we talk more about things we discussed here on the Pro Wrestling Report, the PWR 5, where we look at why John Cena is so hated. That's available exclusively online at pwrshow.com. For that one, this is Damian Nelson saying thank you so much for tuning into this week's edition of the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time.